Hello there carnivores, this is Caleb with Knutson's Meats. We're at Bob Carver's place here, and in his cooler he's got a beef. He needs some help cutting it up. It's a cross between a Red Angus Bull and a French Dairy Breed. He's showing us the fat here on the chuck. Telling us about how they were raised with care here in Finley, Washington. And he needs a little help cutting it up. So we called in Jared Cope, longtime friend and meat cutter. Konnichiwa. And we checked out the situation. We got a Butcher Boy B14 saw. Some of these cuts we're going to just do by hand. We have a hoist there to get that hind quarter up on the rail. And here Jared goes in to take out the tri-tip muscle. We do the same thing at our butcher shop. Jared used to work at Knutson's Meats and he's had much experience working for different beef processors and has a variety of skills and styles that I'm excited to learn from today. So we got the tri-tip carved out. Now he's gonna be outlining the sirloin tip. The sirloin tip is that basketball shaped muscle there right next to the knee joint or patella. And he's just working his knife around that joint, doing his best to find it. And then once he finds it, he uses some real force to just very gently pull that muscle out. Now we can cut the sirloin tip into roast or steaks. If you guys do want to see a video on that, please let me know in the comments below. I can make a video on how to break these primals into cuts for your freezer. And there's your sirloin tip. Now Jared is going to be working on the top half of the tenderloin. This is called the butt tender. The butt tender is next to the top sirloin. But he's just going to follow the bone and cut out the very top half of that tenderloin roast. If you watch the video a little further, we're going to show you an alternative way to take out the whole tenderloin on the rail. If you guys want to do boneless cuts like tenderloin and New York strips, which is what we're going to be doing for this beef. So Jared's got the butt tender exposed. He likes big butts and he cannot lie. Now next he's going to find where that joint meets the short loin. And then he's going to use his knife, a bigger knife there. Oh, wait a minute. We got Bob, Mr. Bob Carver right there, sweeping up the floor, keeping it nice and clean. It's a family affair here in Finley. His daughter's getting the beef and her sons are helping rap, telling jokes and having a good family time. Reminds me of my childhood. So this is our short line. And after he's cut almost all the way through, he just kind of twists it and bends it there. Be careful with your hoist. So we can extract the tenderloin and cut some New York steaks out of that particular cut. Now Jared is going to be extracting the top sirloin. He does this a little bit differently than we do it at our butcher shop in Knutson's Meats. If you've seen our video, how to cut a hind quarter of beef, there'll be a button above the screen here you can click on if you want to watch Corey go to town on a hind quarter and cut it in the way my father learned. My dad started doing meat processing in 1974 going to people's houses and doing mobile slaughter and then over the years we've picked up a lot from different meat cutters at our butcher shop. This video is for you at home. We know this year it's been hard. Some people haven't been able to get their animals in. It would be nice to have a video to kind of show you the basics of breaking down your beef and getting some nice chunks of meat. Jared is just following that muscle right along the sirloin bone, using gravity and weight to really peel that muscle off. He's pointing out, you can see that nice orange skin as he's getting a 
good pull from that muscle. So there's our top sirloin and our tri-tip. Jared's throwing knives. It's getting exciting, folks. Now we're gonna look at the muscle groups of a hind quarter. In front of your eyes is a bottom round. That thin muscle in the middle is gonna be the eye of round. And on the other side is gonna be a top round. I just wanted to show you this muscle so you can kind of see this particular animal does not have a lot of fat. Um, so you can see the muscle groups. And what Jared is gonna be doing is he's gonna be cutting out those three muscle groups. He's starting with the bottom round. And you'll see later in the video, I like to take a knife and cut off some of the fat if you really can't see the muscle groups that well and maybe you're a rookie at it as I am, um, you can see the muscle groups a little bit better if you trim off the fat to kind of get an idea where the bottom, the eye, and the top round are. Those are all muscle groups from the round. You can see Jared's using the meat hook and following the seams of the muscle. Uh, the bottom round makes excellent roast. We do that a lot here at Knutson's. You can use it for jerky, you can use it for stew and you can use it for cube steak and finger steaks. So now he's gonna be working on the eye of the round. We like to use this particular muscle for making cube steak at our butcher shop. It seems to be just the right size. Jared's just following the seams of the eye of the round muscle from top all the way down to the bottom. So if you watched the video before this, we had a world champion speed butcher and he started by taking off the top round first and then he took off the bottom and the eye of round. And as I've watched different videos of meat processors and meat cutters on YouTube, I'm always excited to learn more from other masters of the craft. So this was exciting to work with Jared on this video and to make a video to teach other people how they can do it on their own. You can see the top around is going to be the biggest muscle from the round group. Now he's just following that uh, meat right up to the hip bone. He knows the anatomy of the animal quite well and if it's your first time it might be a little tougher after you've done it a few hundred times. You know where the little bumps are on the hip bone and how to get the most meat off of that particular muscle for the top round is. Okay cool so we got the top round. Jared and I are fabricating those primal cuts into some steaks and roasts. Like I said, let us know in the comments below if you want us to show you a video on what we did that day and what kind of particular cuts we made for the family. So we're going to do another tutorial here on extracting the whole tenderloin. It starts the same with extracting the butt tender and then you can see Jared using his knife to follow down on the vertebrae. The nice thing when you're breaking a beef carcass on the rail is you have gravity on your side. So inch by inch, it's a cinch, and Jared is we want to make sure we get as much of this muscle as we can. It's the most expensive meat on the animal. Now he's just going to go ahead and find where that bone turns to cartilage there, and the last steak of the porterhouse is that. And there you go. Now I'm up to bat on this hindquarter and I'm doing the Knutson Meats Sirloin Tip Extraction. So I start with a bigger breaking knife, usually an 8 inch or a 10 inch breaking knife. And I just pop that uh, kneecap off and then I follow the bone down with my knife, lift it up, pull it off. So we had some issues with the top round, the tendon actually broke on the rail. So Jared and I had to improvise and make a game plan. What we decided to do was we're just gonna do the whole round on the block. I'd seen a couple videos on YouTube of some butchers like to do it this way. I already trimmed the meat off of that heel around and now I'm just trying to find that ACL joint. And after a little hit and miss, I finally found it. Now we're just gonna be outlining those muscle groups following the round muscles. Now, can you tell me what the three round muscles were? If you said bottom round, eye of round, and top round, then you know your three muscle groups from the round section. So Jared got the oyster muscle there off of the hip bone, and I am just outlining that hip bone trying to get this uh, top round off of the hip. So 
So again, we're going to be following the seams of the muscle and I'm just trying to follow that right up to the bone. Jared's helping me out a little holding it. This wasn't what we had planned for the shoot, but sometimes it doesn't always work out the way you were hoping and having another trick up your sleeve really comes in handy. So we're, we're tag teaming uh, this bottom round. And now we're getting that whole femur bone out of the hip joint. And boom, the whole femur bone's gone so we can give that bone to the dogs. And now I have the whole top round, bottom round, and eye of round muscle all together. And what I'm going to do after Jared gets that hip bone off is I'm gonna pull over to my station. You can see they call that the silver side on the bottom round. It's got a lot of silver skin. Again, we use this muscle a lot for making beef jerky and for roast at our butcher shop. The round muscles do well. I do have a video on tying a bottom round roast. If you want to know how the butchers do it with some butcher twine, it helps keep the, the roast formed and cook uniformly. And right now, I'm just following out the seams of the muscle group there from the bottom to the eye and to the top round. I'm just going to go ahead and cut the top round off. Now we're moving on to the front quarter of beef. It just so happens that that B14 Butcher Boy saw was not wired up correctly and we did not get to use it for the first uh, front quarter of beef, but that's okay. Jared uh, and I improvised. We started with extracting the top blade or the shoulder from the beef. You can see Jared's making a cut right here on the foreshank or shin of the animal. And then he's following, he's following the bone until where that arm bone meets the shoulder. He's gonna be taking out the paddle bone. Now when we get this primal to the cutting board, Jared was able to extract some different steaks and some roast from this particular cut of meat. At the butcher shop, it's called the shoulder clod, and you can get flat iron steaks. You can get rancher steaks out of the heart of the shoulder clod muscle. And you got a bone saw, some osebuco or crosscut shanks. Now what I'm doing here uh, is using my knife to follow along the chime bone. I learned this method from Michael Cross on YouTube and watched his video a few times before we came to battle here with this whole steer on the Carver Ranch. And some of the things he taught me were to uh, yeah, outline the vertebrae there around the neck. And then after I followed my chime bone cuts, I just used my knife and I'm gonna extract the whole boneless ribeye. This is your money cut, folks. This is your prime rib Christmas dinner cut. This particular carcass had a good amount of fat, flavor, intramuscular fat. And the nice thing about boning on the rail is gravity's on your side. I'm cutting off some fat from the brisket section here. Now you might wanna go ahead and fire up your smoker, your pellet grill, and we'll put this uh, brisket on we're gonna be making a video on smoking a brisket. One of the best things to smoke. So again, I'm just following that whole brisket right there off the front quarter. Smoking. Smoking. Now I'm gonna be cutting off some of the boneless plate ribs and the, the meat off of the side of the beef. You can use some of this meat for stir fries or stew. It's got a lot of fat, marbling, and flavor. And if you can cut it on the bone, it's absolutely fantastic. So last, last on the list here was the chuck roll and neck. Now that we followed that muscle along the chime bone, we're just gonna be 
following along the carcass and cutting out the chuck or the neck section here. So neck boning is never any fun. Uh, definitely you show you how to bone out a neck at our butcher shop. I do it all the time. I kind of know how the muscles work, so I'm just using my knife and the gravity of that meat to pull down. And you can see there that we're getting some nice meat from the neck and we're gonna have a, a meaty bone there you can use for soup bones or soup stock. But the meat hook really helps, a sharp knife really helps. And there you have it, folks. We want to thank you so much uh, for watching this home kill carcass fabrication. Uh, make sure if you like the video, please let us know in the comments below if you want us to do another fabrication video and subscribe for more carnivorian content. If you like the music in the video, why, that's my band, The Golden Ponies. And these are all new tracks that are going to be coming out real soon. And our first word was whiskey. So we want to thank you guys so much for watching. Stay tuned for more carnivorian content.